Hey, yo, yo, welcome, welcome to Chocolate for Breakfast. We're here today, another Saturday morning, celebrating with chocolate in the morning. Woohoo! I have a special guest with me today, Miss Cara, who is a chocolate expert. So if you're here live, please say hi in the chat box, and we would love to hear from you if you are celebrating yourself. We highly encourage you to celebrate good things in your life, and the more you celebrate, the more awesome stuff happens. And one of the things that I love to do is celebrate with chocolate, because we shouldn't wait to have pleasure until dessert no. before we go to bed have it first thing in the morning people and so every Saturday morning I do a different chocolate recipe and because we have our resident chocolate expert Miss Kari here with us she is gonna tell us a little bit more about chocolate and she brought her own specific recipe which I'm so excited to try and if you guys have any questions about chocolate I mean now is the time yo this girl knows what she's talking about so um, so tell us a little bit about about why you're such an expert Kara Oh, thanks, Jen. Yeah. Well, first <laughs> off, it's so great to be here. Um, I'm so excited because this girl, she's my friend, and that's right. <laughs> we actually met through dance class, um, and we didn't know that we both love chocolate so much, and so it's you know a friendship for life. I think. Yeah, totally. Um, so thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, and, so glad to have you here. I love your videos. Um, yeah. But uh, chocolate <laughs> pursuit. I decided to start a business. It took kind of a path I mean it's in the last year um, but chocolate I'm an expert in chocolate because I've been one tasting it for a long time right oh my uh, God. she used to we used to joke that she would spend like more money on chocolate than she would on dance which that's like kind of true yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, and it really all started I've been in Portland six years but about three years ago um, I was just really searching for fun things to do activities and I noticed that there were all these craft chocolate shops around town uh, which means that chocolate makers actually make the chocolate in-house so that's bean to bar is the term um, and so that just like opened up my taste buds made me so excited and uh, from then, I just started a chocolate meetup group on meetup.com, so you can join that if you want, Portland Chocoholics. And someday, I'll go visit. I'll go visit live. We'll go on location yes. right here in my kitchen, and we'll we'll go somewhere cool and, and have try some great. chocolate. I know. I can't wait to do that. Yeah. Because we do lots of different events, like tours, uh, chocolate crawls, things like that. And just from then, uh, from that point on, I thought, perhaps I should do a spinoff and do a business because I love chocolate tastings. Um, so that's how Chocolate Pursuit kind of started. It was like focused chocolate tastings where you get to try different craft chocolates um, from around the world. And so I brought some today, but after we Yay. eat breakfast, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, we'll have our breakfast first. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it just kind of started this year and I'm really excited for the opportunities and it's perfect for um, bridal events or company parties, dinner parties with your friends, anything really, chocolate tastings, um, tours, uh, educational component of course so you can learn more about where it comes from which we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah, we're going to tell you a little bit about it, that so. too. Yeah. Real yeah. quick I just want to say thanks so much for Laura B who's here and Lily Ma. Hi Laura B. Hi Lily. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Please tell us what you're celebrating in the chat box so we can, we can read it out loud to everyone if you feel so inclined you don't have to um, or you could just tell us what you're celebrating with if you don't like chocolates um, as I always say you're a little crazy but that's okay maybe you're celebrating with something else and um, and if, or if you do have an awesome chocolate that you want to recommend to us we would love to hear it too please we always like to try new ones especially if it's craft chocolate Especially this one over here. She's got a little bit more of a highbrow taste when it comes to chocolate. <laughs> I don't judge though, because yeah. you know, if your favorite chocolate bar is Hershey's, that's great. Uh, but we'll I'll try to work on that and try to expose <laughs> you more and more to high quality chocolate. And you can find a lot of it in stores locally too, um, which is great. And a lot of times the higher quality chocolates basically just have more of the the cacao bean, right? They have more of that rather than a lot of other fillers and sugars and things like that. Exactly. So you'll find minimal ingredients on your chocolate bars and we can talk about that when we eat it too. Yeah, it's yeah. Exciting. Love it. Hey, Laura just, just said she loves me. I love you too. Mwah. <laughs> so glad you're here. I think it's the first time you joined me live, Miss Laura, so it's great to have you here. So let's get to our chocolate recipe. Yes. So Cara had the amazing idea to have amaranth um, grain, which for those of you who don't know, like. yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. I mean, you probably can't see because it's like a micron. It, it's kind of like a like a mini corn grain or like rice, yeah. but it's super, super tiny. It's and like you, little bugs. Yeah, and you just basically cook it on the stove like you would rice. But the cool thing about it is it was it's 
it was discovered years ago, like six, 8,000 years ago by the Aztecs. And the Aztecs have a, a special um, history with chocolate as well. And mm -hmm. But I'll let Carl tell you about that. But the cool thing about the amaranth grain is they used to actually use it to make statues out of it that they worshipped. And then they would break apart the statues and eat it. I mean, it's kind of kind of a cool concept to like, they kind of like basically worship their, their food because they were so grateful for it. So yeah. this is kind of cool. It kind of goes along with the whole reason why I did this whole chocolate for breakfast thing. It's a whole exercise and gratitude. So symbol of prosperity. That's too. right. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell us about what chocolate has to do with Aztecs. Sure. Uh, so chocolate started so long ago. Um, not Hershey. He didn't start chocolate uh, or the right. Europe, or the European. <laughs> no way. Yeah. It actually started. There's some controversy over it, but um, originally started with the Olmex, which is a traditional um, kind of located in Mexico, uh, Tabasco, Mexico, and other regions there. Uh, but from then on. The first like real discovery of it was the Mayans, um, and the Mayans and the Aztecs. Once the Aztecs conquered the Mayans, they kind of like really created this like prosperity kind of idea about chocolate and uh, co cocoa, cacao, and they used it to trade. Um, so they would actually trade cocoa pods, or so it was like money pods. basically. They used it as yeah. currency, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it was a really um, you know, in high demand, and not many people could act. like the Mayans was more of a community type chocolate. Uh, pe people would actually drink chocolate. It was a traditionally a drinking chocolate, um, and so you would grind it with chilies and um, corn. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that grain and make like a fr frothy beverage. Um, and the Aztecs actually, Lord Montezuma, uh, he Love it. <laughs> <laughs> he really. Um, you know, he kind of took it to another level where he used it as an aphrodisiac. Um, and women weren't allowed to drink chocolate. They weren't That's even allowed crazy. to. Um, yeah. So he would drink goblets of it a day, like so much. He his, wanted it, which is crazy. You think he'd want his chicks to be, you know, feel a little more too, you know what I'm saying? saying. <laughs> <laughs> so to increase, uh, you know, his libido, he would drink chocolate. But, but anyhow, I digress. So... <laughs> Really, it's not relevant. <laughs> so you can learn a lot about chocolate. Like I like to um, promote some of the books that I'm reading. The True History of Chocolate. It's a really good book. Um, and I got this one at Powell's. Powell's here in Portland. So, Go Powell's. Yeah. It's a so famous Co bookstore. And yeah. Michael Co. So they uh, co-wrote this book, and it's it's a really great one if you have a chance. I'm not through the whole thing yet, but there's a lot to yeah. learn. <laughs> but if anything sounds inaccurate, there are a lot of um, controversial things too about the history and where it comes from, but the Mayans and the Aztecs really were the ones to kind of started the way back when. And then the Spaniards are the ones who really kind of decided to add the cocoa butter to it and make it kind of what it is today. So that you can thank the Spaniards for that that form that that we that we usually enjoy it with today. Christopher Columbus, actually, Cristobal, he um, <laughs> he kind of took chocolate from, I think it was the Honduras area, uh, and brought it to um, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, and they re rejected it at first. They thought, what is this? What is this? I don't think it's of any value, but um, little did they know that it was going to be amazing. Oh, yes. so good. All Thank right, you. so let's try our let's try our amaranth. So we have these bowls. They look like basically kind of like porridge here. And then um, let's show them. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then Cara brought some uh, cocoa nibs to sprinkle on top, and yes. that's where all the goodness comes. And this is like this is like good. Coconut. This is like the good cereal, people. This is how you do. This is how you do cereal in the morning. Yes, and okay. um. Let me just tell you all a little bit about cocoa nibs real quick. Um, they are actually ground up cocoa beans. So when you crack open a cocoa, a cacao pod, which comes from the tree, um, you have a cocoa bean and there's a whole process of chocolate making but and harvesting of chocolate. But when you break it up, the cocoa bean, you actually get these little nibs, right? So these nibs here, which is separated from the shell. So this is actually a superfood. Um, it's super food is good. really great. Super good too. Good for you. <laughs> food is medicine. That's right. So you can put it in your salads, your shakes, um, mm. and your it's ancient really grains. Mm. So you may have tried cocoa nibs, like dark chocolate covered cocoa nibs, mm. is a lot where a lot of people sell them. So they have that kind of sweeter, um, you know, cocoa chocolate taste. This is just the raw 
cocoa nibs that mm -hmm. that Cara brought, but actually with the amaranth, it kind of brings out the sweetness naturally. It's really good together. Yeah, it kind of has um, uh, like it's it's a little bitter, of course, but then you also taste a little bit of where that cocoa flavor mm -hmm. comes from, which is what's so amazing. Is like that actually creates those chocolate bars, right? So, mm -hmm. so good. Mm. Healthy cereal, people. And it's really inexpensive, amaranth. And you can get it at New Seasons, which is in Portland. I'm sure any health food store has it. And um, yeah, it's a great alternative to oatmeal or things like that in the morning. Um, and it's like in the same family as quinoa, so it's really healthy too. Yeah, so you can have a little amaranth, say a little, you know, Mm. prayer of gratitude to the gods and then eat it just like the Aztecs did thousands of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. So much information. I know, it's guys. So well, and since Cara is here, I should say one of the reasons why she's a guest here besides the fact that she loves chocolate is the two of us are doing an event together mm. in a couple of weeks over at pregame and it's going to be a chocolate tasting event and it's also going to be a little bit of a, of a writing event so we're going to teach you how to do some writing for your business by using this tasting experience so we're super excited about that i'll put all the information about that in um in the description below and uh so if you guys are interested if you're here in portland we love it if you would join us and uh but in honor of that car brought a couple of the chocolate bars we're going to be tasting so let's get into that before we do our celebrations Woo! are you ready for chocolate i hope you all have some chocolate with you right now for yeah, breakfast yeah seriously um, even if you have like just you know little chocolate chips in your cupboard. Go get them and have a couple and, and, and celebrate with us. Yes, I hope so. And let us know what you're tasting. That would be fun. Um, so I have two bars that we're going to sample today. And so we're going to open it up together. Jen told Love me that's it. how we do it. And um, this is <laughs> Ranger Chocolate. They have this beautiful packaging. It's gorgeous, yeah. Um, and they are located, they actually make their chocolate, their local Portland chocolate company, and they make their chocolate at Cup and Bar, which is on MLK between Cooch and Davis, if you want to go visit. And they have drinking chocolate too, which is amazing. But um, they're such great people uh, to work with. They're actually like one of the um, chocolate bars I sample in my tastings. And so today we're going to try 70% Peruvian chocolate, so that's where the Yum. beans come from, and Piora is the region. So sometimes you'll see like where it comes from on the, yeah. on the label, and like um, fine wine. Yeah, really where it comes from. That's cool. Jen, do you want to read the um, summary here on the back? Sure. Since I'm the copy gal, but I gotta yes. have my glasses. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it says grown in the uh, Alto Piura Valley. Is that how you say it? Uh, Pura, I believe. Pura Valley. These beans are considered some of Peru's most exquisite. This rare white Criolla cocoa produces a well-balanced chocolate with a smooth finish. And then it has tasting notes there for us, which says uh, cocoa forward with truffle and a mm -hmm. black cherry finish. Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? Sounds amazing. I can't wait to try it. And what's so great is um, chocolate makers want you know, they know the flavor of the bean, and sometimes it depends on the region or the making process, right? That's going to alter or impact the flavor that you get. But also, flavor tasting, it's very subjective. I mean, Jen might taste one thing, and I might taste another, and there's no right or wrong answer. Um, it's really what your palate tells you you're tasting. So that's Makes what's sense. so great. Makes sense. So let's look at the bar. Ooh, it's so beautiful. That's and pretty. And I'm wearing that. brown on purpose today. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to break it. Oh, Listen to that. That's actually one of the um, key components of a tasting is the snap. So if it has a good snap, it means it's fresh. Um, many things, actually. Yeah, it probably means there's probably more cocoa bean in there, I would imagine, too. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Mmm, -hmm. good stuff, so, guys. Let it melt on your tongue. That's another key indicator. Okay. So you can really get some flavor. Mm-hmm. Mmm. -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Seriously good. The Do cherry, I definitely taste the cherry. Um and the cocoa, but it is very strong in cherry. That's yeah. insane. And it's it's light actually. It's one of their they ha, they have several bars that they make, and it's a bit of a lighter, um, brighter taste. Oh my god, it's so spread. good! <laughs> and it compare with another great thing about chocolate is it compare with wine. So um, this actually mm -hmm. compare with any red wine. Um, it's really really good, fruit mm -hmm. forward flavor. 
um, and coffee as well. So you can pair that with a nice, um, maybe a medium roast or I don't know. So good. I this would be really amazing with more. I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. um, I will also make sure and put the link to the Ranger chocolate down below as well, so you can order it online if you want to. And yeah, check out their website too. And they sell at, in various um, grocery stores, retails around town too. Mm. But oh my gosh, so, so delicious! Good. And so this good. bar is about mm, I think it's like eight dollar value at the store. So so we're talking good chocolate people, good quality chocolate. And then another good thing is how long does the flavor last when you're done with it? Does it stay on your tongue mm -hmm. or does it go away? I like it. It's like a little bit there, but not like too much. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, sometimes when stay, things stay in your tongue and it's like, it's too bitter or something. Cause chocolate can have a little bit bitter flavor. Yeah. But it's not bitter at all. It's just this nice sort of pleasant mm -hmm. finish. Yeah. It's really good. It makes you really grateful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really grateful. Yes. That's right. Grateful for cool. Or, wait, I'm gonna say so hi to the people in the chat box real quick. Yes, I'm gonna sip some more. water. Yeah, sip some water. Cleanse your palate. Let's see. Uh, Laura's saying that she says it looks delicious and she likes dark chocolate too. Me too. Oh, I good. Love dark chocolate. Sherry's here. Hey, welcome, Sherry. So glad that you're here. You said you've been uh, waiting and somehow you missed it. That's so weird. Well, I'm glad you're here now. We're still just doing the tastings and um, we're like still haven't even done our celebrations yet. So you can still tell us what you're celebrating if you guys feel so inclined. Tell us one, two, three things you are celebrating today, and we'd love to share with everybody who's watching. Yes. All right, so now she's got another chocolate bar. Tell us about it, Carl. Yes. <clears throat> so, and Jen, very good point about cleansing the palate between uh, tasting chocolates. You want to drink water. Um, sparkling water is actually the preferred okay. cleansing. Okay, cool. Um, so I if you have that. any with you, your LaCroix, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just the plain one, though, right? Yeah. You don't want to taste it. Yeah. Anyway. Not La Croix. I learned the hard oh, way. Oh, really? Is that yeah. really? I thought it was La Croix. La Croix. Okay, yeah. La Croix. Okay. Um, there was an article about it that I was, like, thinking it was so refined calling it that, but it's really a town in the Midwest, and it was La Croix. Oh, Lacroix. that's yeah. funny. Okay. Yeah. In case you didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Look all things we're learning today here. Not just about chocolate. So <laughs> 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 what obsession. So, um, so the next bar we're going to try is Pitch Dark Chocolate. I love their packaging, too. And they're also a local Portland chocolate maker. They used to be, like, literally down the street. Like, I could walk there. Like, if they were so close, but they just moved the location. So. Yeah. So and too bad they, for me. <laughs> they actually um, have a, they're going into more manufacturing. So they actually have bars at New Seasons that are New Seasons labeled, oh, um, which is a local store okay. here in Portland. Cool. And uh, yeah, they really specialize too in craft chocolate. And the difference between this chocolate and Ranger chocolate is that Pitch Dark actually uses cocoa butter where Ranger chocolate does not. So you can always look at the ingredients um, and you know, yeah. it's pretty fascinating how that can change the flavor. But this, yeah, is wait, a, real quick side note. Cara yeah. and I went shopping last week at the grocery store, and it was really fun. We just looked at all the chocolates that were um, on the shelves. We actually went to Market of Choice. So for those of you who don't know, Market of Choice is a grocery store that's actually out of Eugene. And I used to go there all the time when I lived in Eugene. And, and they've now opened up a couple different locations up here in Portland. And they have an amazing selection of chocolate. There's one down in West Lynn that actually has a little bit better selection than the one in here in Portland of chocolate. But mm -hmm. um, they actually bring up some other chocolates that are kind of down from the region around Eugene too that you can't find a lot up here, which is kind of cool. Um, they yeah. definitely, I definitely noticed they have a lot more craft chocolate than some of the other stores. But New Seasons and Whole Foods, they carry a lot of awesome yeah. ones too. Yeah. It's, it's really great to see, like, as a chocoholic, yeah, <laughs> that uh, grocery stores are kind of expanding their chocolate quality. I mean, I have to say even Safeway, like, yeah, I went down their chocolate aisle just to look and they have a few more things that they didn't have before. Um, like green and blacks, which is made a step oh, up so a little good. bit, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so there's, there's growth in it. Right. So. Right. It's, it's so fun to just go. She just showed me basically like turn it over, look at the ingredients, see what they use. Mm -hmm. You can see kind of the percent of cacao to some of the other ingredients like sugar or cocoa butter. Some of them even like were sweetened with things like there was one that I tried that was so good. It was sweetened oh, with yeah. coconut sugar and apple juice, which sounds really weird. Like I thought it was going to be weird and it was good. so good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of fun just to go and look and, and see what's out there. Yeah, take, and then, um, you know, you can get bar form or you can get confections, so like your toffee or your bark or something like that, and that can be just as um, beautiful, right? And Oh, my God, yeah. There's craft confection makers in town like Alma. Um, they're amazing as well. So, Jen, do you want to read this one? Sure, the, yeah. There's a little bit of a difference on the back here, but just tell, tell I love it. Kind of bar. 
So it says it's um, it's origin from uh, originated from Nicaragua, and it actually says, sh tells you the process: bean to bar, and the notes are nutty and a plum taste, mm. which I love plums too. So this is going to be exciting. I can't wait to try it. And it says it's a sixty six percent rugoso, and I'm assuming mm -hmm. that is also the is that the region or the bean. I'm guessing that's the region um, in Nicaragua. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then it, um, let's see, does it say anything else? It's, it just says this bar is created to um, mm. highlight the complex nutty plum flavor notes found in the rare cacao. There you go. Mm. Very nice reading. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, take a look at this beautiful bar. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Broken up into yeah. squares for us. That's really nice. Um, let's want to smell it. Mm -hmm. mm, you can just smell mm. the chocolate on that. Oh, yum. Yeah. Smelling is also yeah. the first thing. I mean, you would look at it and then smell it. That's yeah. the first two steps of the tasting process. So let's go ahead and break that. Nice snap. Yeah, very nice snap. Here you are. Yeah. Mm, so I'm looking forward what? to that plum. Me too. Let's see if it's any different than <laughs> the cherry. Mm. And just even if you, yeah, there's a difference. I definitely, mm -hmm. the nuttiness versus was the other bar, nutty, definitely. that comes first. Mm -hmm. mm, and the plum kind of comes out as it melts in your mouth. Yeah. Mm hmm. There's definitely more of a plum. It has creamy, than a cherry. creamier. Mm hmm. It is the cocoa creamier. butter can kind of make it that creamier um, texture. And it's funny because at first I thought it was harder, and then as it's melted, it's more creamy. It's melting faster. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, cocoa butter can do that. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, really, a cocoa bean, just to give you a little more information, cocoa bean, um, can, when it's ground, it, uh, extracts into cocoa butter and then you have your cocoa mass uh, so that's more like the solid chocolate right and then cocoa butter so if you ever see a white chocolate bar mm -hmm. which is kind of cool white chocolate's controversial in the chocolate world um i still think it's chocolate i will say because you have a really good quality yeah, white so chocolate bar yeah but that's the primary ingredient is cocoa butter so you actually remove oh, the cocoa okay. mass which would create the brown Dark color right yeah and so it's made you know, mixed with sugar or milk. Or, yeah. So it kind mm. of is comparable in a way to like red and white wine, right? Because like mm -hmm. the red wine has the skins on, the white one often is, mm, you know, not yeah. necessarily all made from, oh, good. The, mm -hmm. from a white grape. Sometimes it's just made, the skins are taken off. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Love oh, it. I love that bar. Me too. It's good. Do you have a preference to which bar you I like? I like the Ranger. You do? I do. Yeah. I think I like the Pitch Dark, so. That's funny. I like them both. It's course. cool to just taste and just taste the difference, too. Like, you know, what you kind of prefer, right? You yeah. Just take, go to the grocery store, buy a couple of craft chocolate bars, and, and do a little tasting for yourself and see what you like. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing. Cool. Yeah. And if you do that and you watch us on the replay, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to know what you guys think about the tastings. And, and if you have any questions, let us know, too. Yeah. Because sure. one of us will get on there and answer questions, especially if it's complicated. She'll be the one who answers the questions. <laughs> I'm also going to be teaching a class at Portland Community College, so I'm really excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's yeah, next chocolate. term, spring term? Mm -hmm, okay. Spring term. That's awesome. Yay, so. woohoo. All right, so let's get to the celebration. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll go first. I'll tell you what the first thing I'm celebrating. So the first thing I'm celebrating today is friendship. Aww. Obviously, I've got my friend Cara here. I'm so excited to have friends here live on the broadcast with me, too. Sherry, Laura, um, Lily Mott. So awesome to have you guys here. So I'm celebrating friendship, and I'm so grateful for all the friends that I have. Thank you so much. And, and uh, you know, I'm just excited to be celebrating the holidays with y'all. What's awesome. What are you celebrating today? <laughs> Can I copy that? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Ditto. No, I was really going to say that. <laughs> no, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> yes, I'm really, uh, great joy in my life is like people who make me like feel happy and uh, inspire me. And I think um, Jen is one of those people like full of ideas yeah. and full of um, just kindness. And I think that really spreads around. And, Aww. Yeah. Yay. So thanks for having Hugs. me on. <laughs> Okay, so the second thing I'm celebrating today is I am celebrating December because it's the first Saturday in December, and December is kind of a qual uh, quality. <laughs> December is kind of a magical month. I feel like there's all kinds of fun stuff that's happening. You know, there's Christmas, um, mm -hmm. there's holiday parties, and then I, my favorite time probably is that time between like Christmas and New Year's, where you kind of 
can finally just chill after all that shopping and the present opening and you can kind of get ready to, to for new adventures in the new year. So I love December. Yeah. That's great. I love December too. Cause fall allergies are going away. <laughs> yeah, totally. For those of us who have allergies here in, in the Oregon area. I know anyway, <laughs> uh, number two, what do I, I didn't prepare. That's okay. You can just like think of something. It just can be small. It can be like you're grateful for chocolate or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go broad. I think I'm really grateful for, um, movement. I mean, now I'm Love here that. with my yes. friend Jen. And yes. so dance, any form of movement, exercise, um, activity to, there's so many different forms, right? But even the nice walk, um, getting like active can really just make you feel happy or calm or there's just so many so many ways, but I, I love know I miss, I miss having you a dance class because we, you know, she hurt her knee a few years ago, uh, two years ago, something like that. Yeah, anyway, two years. <laughs> and she still is sort of recovering from that whole thing. Um, and so it's kind of been, I missed her in class, but she started doing um, her own like silent disco thing. So tell us a little about that. It's like a thing here in Portland, the silent disco thing. We got to try that, Laura, sometime. We got to go out. Yeah, silent disco. Um, I just happened to find it. Uh, there's actually some friends of mine, you know, have a company, um, Heartbeat Sound Systems, and uh, they do it especially in the summer, like in the park and stuff like that. And you wear headphones, and you listen to music, and it's respectful to the community because it's quiet, but you're also bonding with other people through music. So you can have your own private dance party and connect with other people. So shout out to my friend Jokes Kimba, who's also a DJ, and um, yeah, they just do great, great music, and they bring different DJs and different channels. So you can find them around. I think around the US, like my first one was in New York that I went to. So it's such a weird concept, the idea of having earphones on and dancing while other people are having your it's just kind of a weird yeah. thing. But I mean I, I definitely want to give it a try. So it looks it looks like a blast. And I have a few friends, including Cara, who've done it and like rave about it. So yeah. anyway, and so I love to go out dancing anytime, any place. So I think it'll be fun, I'm sure. Yeah. And then the last thing I am celebrating today is I what am I celebrating? What was I gonna celebrate? Um mm. Oh, I know, I know, I was gonna celebrate workshops because I am obviously doing the workshop with Kara in a couple weeks. I'm excited about that over at pregame. And uh, another actually fellow pregame member is having a writing workshop that I'm going to tomorrow. So workshops nice. are like all, all going on with, in my world. So I'm really excited to learn at a workshop and also be teaching at a workshop this month. That's great. And I'm really excited too. So too. like we're having a great time. The workshops will be great. Um, and you get a little bit more in depth about what we've been talking about. Um, so yeah, more in depth, more chocolates, more yumminess. Can't yeah. go wrong. More prosperity, right? Yeah. Bring some richness into your life. It's great. Uh, so number three for me, I, I couldn't, you know, be on this podcast without saying video shoot, podcast. video cast, YouTube live thing uh, <laughs> without, um, being thankful for, um, our farmers. So, or just the whole yes. chocolate making process. So, um, where we get our beans actually, um, chocolate is only, I'm going to throw in a fun fact. Love it. Love chocolate, it. uh, is, can only be grown 20 degrees North and South of the equator. So um, Hawaii is the only place in the U.S. that it grows. Uh, but wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. Because that's have the right new. climate um, in order to harvest and grow. Um, so, you know, Central America, um, South America, and then, you know, there's places in Asia as well, and, and Africa, of course. Seventy percent of our cacao comes from Africa. Um, so really being grateful for the people who harvest that and go through the whole process because there's a huge process before those beans actually get to um, those chocolate makers. And some people even, um, there are some chocolate companies who do the whole thing. So that's called wow. Treat a Bar. Okay. Which is amazing. Oh like, my God, that's so amazing. Yeah. yeah, they do yeah. the whole process. But um, working directly with farmers is um, the preference or fair trade practices. So just when you take a look at your bars, um, sometimes it'll note that or you have to do a little more research, but see if there's, you know, ethically sourced because it's really important to, um, you know. Yeah, the fair trade situation, right? Give love to our right? yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yay, I'm so Yay. excited. Let's see what you guys are celebrating. If you guys are noting anything in there, let's I'm gonna see. Eat more chocolate. Yeah, well, she'll eat chocolate as I read out what you guys are talking about. Let's see. Sherry says she admits she loves milk chocolate. It's um, great. Milk chocolate. I great. know. I like milk chocolate too, especially depending on what you're eating with. I think sometimes it can even taste better. Um, 
And let's see, you're celebrating another leak in your roof. Not, okay. I, I'm hoping that means that you're not having a leak and you're celebrating this. <laughs> or that you're celebrating this going to be fixed soon. Yes. Um, and Laura says Meadow is great for chocolate shopping. Yes, mm. it's one of her favorite places. She goes yeah. and spends lots of money there. <laughs> My favorite. Mm. Um, and Sherry's asking if we've been to a chocolate factory, Ghirardelli's or Hershey's. You've been to Brown and Haley, which has Almond Rocca Mountain Bars. Seas Candies, Johnson's, and the Mars Brothers started in Tacoma. I did not know, I didn't know about that. that. Either. That's, That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I have personally, I've been to Ghirardelli's down in San Francisco. That's mm -hmm. the only Me place too. I've been besides um, the Portland area ones. Um, yeah. My favorite here in town, which we haven't even mentioned, is Missionary Chocolate. That is my favorite. Oh, I yeah. love them. So, uh, and Melissa was actually the very first client I ever wrote copy for. So she's amazing. So. Um, and let's see, Sherry says she's celebrating the beginning of skiing, snow, Christmas decorations, family time, and flying to Orlando. That's right. You're leaving your convention this week, Sherry. Well, I hope you have a great trip. <laughs> and, uh, before we sign off, we thought we would, uh, I, I thought actually, I thought I would ask Kara to do a little preview of her. She has actually a chocolate wrap, y'all. Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> can you give us just a little taste of it? It's really fun. She She's done a lot of um, spoken poetry with me before, and she's amazing. But the chocolate wrap, I mean, come on. It's chocolate, and it's a wrap. I mean, how cool is that? So come on. Give us, okay, give us the good. <laughs> it actually was almost the spark. Like, I wrote a wrap before I even started the business and stuff. And I, uh, the video is going to be up, like, within the year. So. Um, Awesome. When it gets up, fun. I'll put that in the link. So if you happen to watch this months from now and you, 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 you know, I'll put the link for that as soon as it's up. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I'll also put the link for Pitch Dark, for Ranger Chocolate, oh, yeah. um, and all the stuff we've been talking about. I'll put all that all below and our workshop in case any of you here in Portland want to go. And uh, you can find all that in the description below. Okay, cool. Um, so just a little pretty. <laughs> Used to wake up in the morning, it was just another day working for the man, wasting my life away. Eight to five, zero drive, shit like office space, folded paper planes, a million origami cranes. I just sat there, man, I never used my brain. My roomies would blame it on my lack of sleep. My mother said it was simply lethargy. I tried to eat more meat and gobble up my greens, chock full of protein and alkalines. <laughs> Sometimes I lay in bed at night, I close my eyes and dream. What does it say? Uno, dos, tres, cho. Uno, dos, tres, cho. Uno, dos, tres, la. Uno, dos, tres, te. Chocolate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate, 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 bate, bate, chocolate. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Carla, for being here. <laughs> and thank you guys for joining Sherry and Laura and Lily Ma. Let's see, any last words from y'all? Just that, uh, oh, Laura B is celebrating too. She's celebrating cozy, snuggly weather, friends, and delicious chocolate. I love it. Oh, that's great. Oh, Dick Taylor. I love Dick Taylor, by the way. Yay. It's like one of my favorites. Awesome. So I'm awesome. I love it that you are celebrating with chocolate. That's amazing. And uh, we'll see you guys next week for another Chocolate for Breakfast. Thanks for being here. Yes. And, uh, oh, one more thing. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to uh, find out more information, um, feel free to follow me on Facebook or Instagram, Chocolate Pursuit, and um, my website, chocolatepursuit.com. It's under construction, but it'll be up pretty soon. Um, so feel free to check that out as well. Awesome. Thanks. I'll put the link for that in the description below too. So you can find her easily. And uh, so excited that you were being here tomorrow. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We're going we're gonna to go eat some more chocolate. Yes. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs>